of the higher ranks of the Red Army and the role it plays in, such, in conflicts such as the Russo-Finnish War and the first months of World War II. Imagine, you hear a loud and demanding knock on the door in the middle of the night. You open to see NKVD officers holding an arrest warrant for your family member who is in the Army. They arrest your family member and take them away to their trial. This is the last time you ever see your family member. This is the reality that many Soviet family members of high-ranking military officials encountered during the years of 1936 to 1939. Many of their family members have been arrested, tried, and executed the very same day. In some cases, NKVD officers came back to arrest the entire family because of their connection to the military official. Most of them were either executed or sent to the gulag. The pictures on this slide show several arrest warrants and files from trials of different arrested officials. The thesis for this presentation for this paper is, Stalin felt threatened by high ranking military officials, and because of this, he eliminated most of them. This is one of the reasons why the Red Army performed poorly in the Russo-Finnish War and during the first months of World War II. Stalin realized how much of a threat, how smart these military officials were, and he saw how much of a threat they were. He was afraid that they would overthrow him, so he did what Stalin did best, and he eliminated them. The makeup of the Red Army before the Purge consisted of Red Commanders, which refers to both men who served as Imperial Army officers, but later embraced the Revolution, and to those who first joined the military and became officers during or after the Revolution. Then it also had military specialists who were czarist holdovers that did not adopt communist politics or were willing to serve in the Red Army. Pictured here are cadets in a military school in Ukraine in 1933. Some of the high-ranking military officials that I will be talking about are Mikhail Tukhachevsky, Ioni Yakiev, and Ironim Ugarievich. And these are some of the uh, 17th Party Congress delegates, and in the middle is Mikhail Tukhachevsky. And also in this picture, Mikhail Tukhachevsky is seated, and Iona Yakir is standing. So Mikhail Tukhachevsky joined the Imperialist Army in 1911. He obtained military education. He officially joined the Communist Party on April 5th, 1918 and quickly became a prominent military commander of the Civil War. He was always trying to find ways to mechanize the Red Army against Stalin's close friends in the military. Stalin and Tukhachevsky had, different difference, had large differences in their personality. In addition to this, he, his advanced military con concepts, his bad relationship with Stalin's friends, only deepened Stalin's hostilities. At the age of 42, he became a marshal in the, Red, in the Soviet Army, and he, it, he was one of the first to receive this position. This is the highest position in the Red Army. Yakir had no military official, had no military education. He became a member of the Bolshevik Party in 1917, and he started his military service as a commissar in the Red Army. He was awarded the Order of the Red Banner twice in 1919 and once in 1930, and became one of the most decorated officers. He was a close friend of Mikhail Tukhachevsky in their efforts to reform the military, and he was an avid member of the Communist Party, but Stalin still saw him as a threat. And Mugarevich began his military career during World War I, serving as junior officer in the Imperial Army, who was military commander of the Red Army during the Civil War, fought along, alongside Tukhachevsky in the Polish War, and he was commander of the Belarusian military district, which would bear the brunt of any fight against the Soviet Union in the Western War. This slide shows political cartoons of describing the purge, and on the left, uh, on the top is Nikolai Yezhov, who was the leader of the NKVD, and he was the prime executor of the purges. And the picture on the right shows Stalin and just how he did all the behind-the-scenes work during the purges. He never got his hands dirty, but he was always ordering people around to do to get to do the killings. So the purge of the higher ranks began in 1937, and on this slide are. This is the actual prison cell that many of the uh, officials were taken to, and including Iona Yakir. And the vehicle is known as the Chorny Baron, which means Black Raven, because there were no windows, so they had no idea where they were going. It was pitch black. Um, so they were extremely scared, and they didn't know what they were doing. So 
Marshal Mikhail Tukhachevsky, and seven other high-ranking officers, Yakir Ubarevich, Eidman, Gork, Putna, Feldman, Primakov, were arrested and charged with being part of the Trotskyist anti-Soviet military organization. They were charged with creating a right-wing military conspiracy and espionage for Nazi Germany. The case against them was built on forged documents from Nazi Germany. Mikhail Tukhachevsky was arrested on May 26, 1937. His trial was on June 11, 1937. He was accused of being part of the Trotskyist anti-Soviet military organization and being a Nazi spy. Um, he was said to have secrets with the German contacts, and he was killed at dawn on June 12, 1937, right after his trial. It is said that his last words were proclaiming allegiance to the Soviet cause and to Comrade Stalin. After he was killed, his wife and two brothers were executed. His sisters were sent to the Gulag, and when his daughter reached adulthood, she was sent to the Gulag as well. Yakir was arrested on May 31, 1937. He was accused of the same thing as Tukhachevsky. He was tortured and executed on June 12, 1937. And Stalin also went after Yakir's family, either killing them or sending them to the Gulag. And Ubarevich was arrested in May, in May of 1937. He was tried over the same things, and he was executed with his book methods. This slide shows a newspaper article describing the trial and the execution of these military officials and uh, the public's reaction to it. And also, the public was rather relieved that these traitors were gone, even though these were set up. And so the public had no idea what the truth was in, the, in many cases. So all of these men that were part of the Trotsky's anti-Soviet military organization were posthumously rehabilitated in 1957. A lot of the documents from the trial have been destroyed, but after the fall of the Soviet Union, more light has been brought to the horrific actions that Stalin took against his own people. The Russo-Finnish War was also known as the Winter War, and it took place from 1939 to 1940. It began November 30, 1930 with 1939, with Russia's invasion of Finland. The Soviet Union said that they did this for territorial gain, especially with the border of Finland being so close to Leningrad. They believed that an increase in territory would bring more security to Leningrad. And the Soviets possessed three times as many soldiers as the Finns, three ta 30 times as many aircrafts, and 100 times as many tanks. Stalin's purchase of the high ranks crippled the Red Army. 30,000 officers had either been executed or imprisoned. This resulted in many inexperienced senior and mid-level officers within the Red Army. The Soviet Army underestimated the morale of the Finns, and because of the loss of the experienced military officials, the Red Army lost the war terribly. The Soviet Union lost as many as 321,000 to 363,000 men, and the soldiers lost 70,000, or the Finns lost 70,000. Um, this lasted less than a year, but it was devastating for the Russians. And these just pictures show the Russians having to fight in the winter in Finland, which, even for the Russians, wasn't easy. I think the Finns, one battle was the Finns came, in, came at them on skis, and they just couldn't do anything. Another example of the Army's military failure can be seen with their reaction to Operation Barbarossa in the first months of the World War II. The Soviets, this, to the people of the Soviet Union, the war is known as the Great Patriotic War, and despite several warnings, the Soviet Union was apparently unprepared for the invasions of the Nazis with, under Bar Operation Barbarossa. The first couple months of the war, the Red Army lost millions of men as prisoners of war to the Nazis, and they suffered on the field because of mediocre officers, partial mobilization, reorganization, overpromotion of incomplete or inexperienced officers, and hasty pre-war expansion favored the Germans. In all, 46 divisions of men were lost within the first couple months of the Second World War. These pictures show Soviet uh, soldiers in combat, and the picture to the left shows the civilians after the invasion. The total amount of officers lost were 11 of 13 army commanders, 57 of 85 corps commanders, and 110 of 195 division commanders. And then 15,000 to 30,000 officers were eliminated. And that's just an estimate because they don't know because so many documents were lost and a lot of people still don't know what happened to the family members. Um, these monuments are in memory of the soldiers that were, or the officers that were killed in the purge. The one on the left has several names of the men from the Trotsky Anti-Soviet Military Organization, and it's in 
Tomchansky Cemetery, and the picture on the right is in memory of Mikhail Tomchansky. Thank you all for listening to my presentation, and I'm free to answer questions. Any questions?